You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you may on Twitter, the gaming drag today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Oh yeah, also be sure to click on that link, that link in the description, the the affiliate link for Green Man Gaming. Anything y'all buy using that link, I get I get commission for. And also, my lovely girlfriend Elle is an artist, and I've got links to her FA and her Twitter. She's taking commissions, so. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> oh, boy, yeah, this episode. Let's get that off. Are you sure? He asks in a surprisingly calm voice. His form froze and solid, and ears honed in on me in anticipation of an answer. It's clear his instincts are slowly taking over, and I find it so exciting and simply exhales I undo his pants. I'm certain. He doesn't need more. The wolf pounces on me as if I were a cornered fawn, his muzzle sinking to my neck. He's nipping at my skin, gently pricking it with his fangs until he leaves a red indentation, which he then licks over in an attempt to kiss them better. I melt into his form and surrender, allowing him to caress my most vulnerable spot. There's something undeniably erotic about a massive wolf man gliding his dagger-like fangs across your windpipe. It's an utter surrender to his most basic animal instincts, and I trust him to remain in control. Once he left several red spots, he licks his lips as if he tasted the most delectable of treats and looks at me intently. Come. Just one word. That's all it takes for me to follow him into the tent. Oh, my! Ha! <laughs> um. The wolf splays himself, on, splays himself comfortably against the backpack. <sighs> oh, sorry. Every muscle in his body tenses as he stretches his hands behind his head. My heart skips, my heart speeds up, and despite drinking just a moment ago, I feel parched again. I bite my lower lip, taking off my dress and admiring his perfectly sculpted body. I can tell I'm enjoying myself, and, and I can he can tell I'm enjoying himself, and dons a wide, seductive smirk, and then delivers the killing blow. His leg cough bops merrily as he flexes his throbbing erection. His wolf hood bidding me to release it from its con from its confines. Come here, I won't bite. You play nice. Oh, oh, hello there. Uh, thumbnail. That was definitely the thumbnail for the video. He rasps in an impatient tone, and I swallow heavily. My hands tremble as I crawl forward, throwing my head obediently into his groin. As expected, after such a long journey, his underwear smells of pleasant musk earned through strenuous workout. I take shameless inhales of his intoxicating scent, the mixture of sweat and pheromones firing up every nerve in my body. Impatiently, I take hold of the loincloth and unfurl it, letting out his impressive package. Oh my god. It's glorious and furry, and I can't but fondle his, uh, yep, his, uh, the, the, the balls, yep. Drawing a soft groan from the wolf and bidding the glistening red thingy out of its tip. Red popsicle, yep. Gonna be playing with a red popsicle today. Encouraged by this slight crack in his stoic bravado, I decide to lean in and suckle on his stones. I'm getting lost in his scent and the taste of brine on his fur. Oh god, jeez. Yeah, that thing's gonna split you in half. The wolf groans loudly, clearly unaccustomed to such stimulation, and within seconds, uh the that yeah, the the popsicle is fully out of the wrapper. I gasp, still amazed by the size of it, my awe drawing a prideful growl from the from the towering male. He takes a sharp inhale, straining every muscle in anticipation, causing his thing to twitch. A small vein wriggling at the side of the shaft, yep. The smell filling the tent is enthralling, like a raw essence of lust, heat, and desire. It stimulates me, and I finally can no longer restrain myself. I close my eyes and part my lips, letting the yep, yep. That's what we're doing, we're sucking on a popsicle. That's all we're doing, YouTube. That's all we're doing. It tastes like him. Like how a wolf should taste, and I want more. Instincts overtake me, and I'm suckling at it, greedily lapping small globules of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, sweet cherry droplets. Yep, it's melting now, so you have to suck it very quickly. I'm too far gone now, and all that matters is to chase his, is to chase his release. I want him to, you know, I want the popsicle to burst in my mouth. I want to give him, I want to give that popsicle pleasure like it's never experienced before. He throws his head back, groaning in unspeakable desire, which is weird considering I'm sucking on a popsicle, his body reacting to every twist and turn. The wolf shivers and his eager hips begin to thrust involuntarily, begging for more. I smile, basking in the animalistic praise bestowed upon me by his lustful body, but my eyes shoot wide open when his paws take hold of my head. I, 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 I won't be able to... Just try. He groans a desperate request. One second, y'all, I need some water. This is too... Spicy. It's too spicy, y'all. It's too spicy. 
Again, I gulp audibly and take a deep inhale, nodding in agreement. He aligns my face with the tip and pushes in. I try to warp my wrap my warp. I was on top of my teeth, but my mouth is too wide open, and I'm ready. And I ready myself to receive him. He doesn't keep me waiting and glides in. My head's a buzz with thirst, and I ignore the discomfort of that large popsicle reaching to the very back of my throat. I want it. I want it all. I squeeze. I squeeze the popsicle stick, fondling it in one hand and using the other to stimulate the majority of the of the red popsicle that doesn't fit inside. I can hear as he readjusts himself, propping his body on his hind paws, scratching the dirt as he takes perch. His breath becomes erratic, and so do and so do his so do his thrusts. I use my hand as a gauge, ensuring he doesn't go too far, despite my deepest desire for him to do just that. I fight against my gag reflex as he as the popsicle increasingly assaults the entrance to my throat. I try to relax, feeling a strained body and pent up breath, betraying an incoming yeah. Just a few more seconds. I can do it. I know I can make him feel good. And then, it, and then the popsicle comes. His claws sink slightly into my scalp as he shoves the popsicle an inch deeper than I expected, with the tip finally penetrating into my gullet. He ain't gonna be hungry for the entire next day, probably. My eyes water as I feel it throb, depositing the first dollop of uh, sweet cherry, sweet cherry juice straight inside me. Another shot fills my insides, and I feel sated. But the lack of air now begins to rock my body, and I'm thrown into survivalist, survivalist panic. Oh shit! I had to block all this out. Damn. I pushed my head away, causing a still, causing the, the, the still spurting popsicle to pop freely. The knot at his base fully inflated. Uh, yep, the popsicle's got a knot, y'all. As, as the popsicle sprays us both in the last few gushes of sticky triumph. I did it. I made the popsicle go. <laughs> oh, man. What a mess. He lays there as if barely surviving some brutal combat. His chest expanding and collapsing in rapid succession. He's spent, and I just sit there, admiring the afterglow for the first time. After a few moments, he raises his head with a worried expression, looking to me almost apologetically with his ears splayed back. I'm sorry if I was too... You are perfect. I cut him off with all the honesty of my heart. I wouldn't have him any other way. A wolf claiming his prize, instinct overtaking in search of feral release. What is that if not the purest of compliments? I looked at my hand, covered in a drizzle of his... Yeah, and bring it to my up to my lips. Oh God! What in the world? We'll see that again. Ooh. Doop, 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 doop. <laughs> I love it. I look it off, gazing at him intently as I see it. Oh, stand as I see that yet another popsicle being presented to me. I smirk, leaning in forward and perking my lips for a kiss. He coops my head, and our tongues join in, in a passionate dance. When our lips part, his glossy eyes lock with mine, and I see them tremble. I love you. He rasps as an oddly sad tear trickles down his left cheek, and I'm t taking him back. <sighs> Sorry. All the excitement and heat of our union is suddenly t suddenly sucked out of the tent. I love you too. I mutter reassuringly, uncertain what's actually going on, unwittingly causing the wolf to jump up in panic. But what's the matter? Shit. I can't do this. Not again. His voice becomes shakier, and, and now and I know now that something's wrong. More water. I need more water. <sighs> He's wavering. I can feel it through his deflated posture. Rannick, it's okay. I mutter encouragingly, stroking his cheek, but he brushes my hand away. No, this isn't right. We shouldn't have done that. He sounds increasingly panicked, and I blink. Why wouldn't it be? You don't have to be ashamed. It's okay to have those feelings. It's not that. Well, what is it then? Because if it's not the, if it's if it's not this defective nonsense again, you're not coming back with me. He spits out angry through deep rattled breaths as if it took all the strength to get it out of his chest. What? What do you mean? I'm taking you to Strandbar to leave you there. What? I pull myself away from him, sitting up and looking at the wolf who avoids my gaze. My eyes gloss at the sight of his defeated expression. He's serious. You can't. I say pleadingly, putting my hand on his paw, but he retracts it as if burned by my touch. I must! His coarse voice snaps in my direction. He's barely keeping composure. That's what my father wants. That's what he demands. Even if it were up to me, I would I would not knowingly drag you back there. How can you say that? You think this is some sort of den tale? How do you think this story would end? Rennick, what are you saying? Tears now flow freely from my eyes. Two heavy streaks burning my cheeks and the wolf looks away in shame. He covers his crotch with a loincloth, trying to bring some dignity to the situation, but I'm long past that. 
I sit there, naked and sobbing, disbelief rocking my body. We need to face the reality of things. His hushed voice barely reaches my ears. Your life is in danger. Every day the noose gets tighter around your neck and you tug at it like an, ob like an oblivious pup. I didn't do anything. You've done plenty. The green eyes lock with me in anger, his accusatory tone bolstering his resolve almost as if he sought courage to do what has to be done. Not only Aldris is infuriated with you, but now even Vithyr wants you gone. My father was never even remotely religious. The only reason Vivarissa's bluff worked on him was the fact that it would cause a fuss. Well, you caused more than a fuss. Wolf throws his arms into the distance. More than half the tribe just waits for an excuse to be done with you. With Andalt on the loose and Vool close to snapping your neck, our situation became untenable. You, you can't be serious! I barely speak up as the air is kicked out of my lungs. Your presence alone puts us all in danger. If somehow you manage to keep your head, there will still be a war coming. You've heard yourself that my father might lose his position in part thanks to you. Should that happen, your death is all but certain. It's just a matter of when and by whose paw. I won't watch you being executed. Especially not if my friends can be next to follow. How can you say this? You know it's true. His voice wavers again, and like a goaded beast, I decide to strike back. So you waited until I gave you head to tell me this? What the fuck? He cringes at the words, which means he knows how this looks. I tried to talk to you. I, I tried to stop. Not hard enough, he spit it out. You're an asshole. How could you lie to me like this? What was all this carefree camping bullshit for? You should have told me from the beginning what's happening. I, I knew you wouldn't take it well. So you, you just pretended that everything is fine? Duped me? No. Rannick hangs his head, locking his wearied gaze with the padding beneath us. I wanted to make sure I would go through with it. If we talked it over in the village, there was a chance you would sway me one way or the other. So you just took the Ted chance away from me? I lash out, tears cascading down on my knees, causing the wolf to snap back. I cannot risk your life, or if anyone else is on a whim, or anyone else is on a whim, someone has to be the responsible one. And that someone always has to be me. You've promised to take me home. You've promised me the very first night. And where is home exactly, huh? The wolf asks mockingly. You show no signs of actually recovering any memory. I cannot be saddled with you forever. Saddled? Is that what I am to you? A burden? You know what I mean. His anger wavers as his eyes desperately try to lock onto anything on anything other else other on anything else other than me. No, I don't. You you can't do this to me. I do it for you. He protests. Everyone's right. You stand far better chances of finding your place in this world in Strandbar than cooped up in my cottage. Is that what you say to yourself? I scoff in anger. But you're being selfless. Because to me, it seems you're just a coward who cannot truly commit to anything or anyone. I let my words hang, my chest rising and falling in quick succession. I cannot believe him. Why didn't you tell me? I demand, and he meets me with a defiant gaze. Because I didn't want our last few days to be ruined by this. I knew you'd be broken and bargaining each step of the way. You would be chipping up my resolve with each passing day until I finally gave in or snapped. He does everything he can to keep himself from breaking down. I told you right away those last few days would have turned into a nightmare. At least I would have had time to come to terms with it. Something you took away from me. You took away my right to say proper goodbyes with full Verissa and Cora. And by keeping it until the very last moment, you took away my right to be angry with you. Because now I'm ruining our final moments together. I force all the spitefulness into my gaze and anger slowly boiling up to, my, up to the surface shuts down my waterworks. He startled, seeing my little rattled chest going up and down while my teeth chatter in fury and furry. <laughs> You've lied and manipulated me. I now understand how Tano must have felt. Really? He asks, utterly stunned. You're going to use that against me? I told you this in confidence. I was not the villain of that story. He lets his lips quiver and his eyes shine with clear hurt. But you're not the victim either. You forced me to face a done deal just like he did to you. In an impossible situation here. Oh, boo-hoo. I'm the one left without a choice. You're angry. I understand why you lash out, so I won't hold it against you. Don't. I clench my fists, trembling with anger like I've never felt before. Don't you high horse me! What does that even mean? He scoffs. I'm trying to make it as easy as... No, I can't do this. I cut him off, getting up to my feet and collecting my clothes. What are you doing? I'm getting away from you. I can't bear to look at your face. I walk towards the exit when his paw clenches around my wrist, stopping me in my tracks. You can't. It's not safe. Go to hell, Rannick. I try to yank myself free, but his hold stays firm. The wolf issues a warning ground, throws me onto the bedding. No, you'll stay right here. He thumps his feet in anger, towering above me. For an instant, I'm reminded he's a massive beast man with shining claws and fangs. I'm not going to spend the night with you. 
Fine, he snarls. If you insist on acting like a pup, then I'll leave. I won't have your blood on my paws in case something happens. Yes, we wouldn't want to add anything to your already heavy conscience. I jeer at him with all the nastiness I can muster, melting away his anger and replacing it with deep and indescribable sadness. I'll just stay here, surrounded by your jizz. His green eyes lock with me for a moment, darting across my body in confusion as if looking for the right words. But eventually the wolf gives up the search and simply sighs deeply, pulling on the tense cloth. Think what you must. Hate me if you will. His voice is low and devoid of life. I didn't want this. I tried to resist and to be respectful, but I failed. That's on me. I think you go is the hardest thing I've ever had to do since Tano. But ultimately, I know it's the right thing for everyone involved. Seriously, Rana, get the fuck out of here! I slam my fist into the bedding and the wolf abides. He picks up his loincloth and pants, leaving the tent with one last sad look in my direction. Once I'm alone, I allow my anguish to claim me, unloading wave after wave of tears and howling like an injured beast into the pillow. I'm in pain, and the anguish tremors rock my entire body. Once again, I'm thrown into a pit of despair. I'm in mourning. I'm mourning, in mourning over the life I once had, and the one I imagined I could have. I'm grieving over losing the very person that just hurt me so badly. Indeed, despite the anger at this fucked up situation, what hurts the most is the fact I'll never see him again. I'll never see any of them again. Minutes turn to hours, and I continuously sob with no sign of reprieve. Eventually, all falls silent and the fire goes out. Everything fades into darkness on this moonless night. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Phew, I was... Started out spicy, ended up being very sad and heavy, and, uh, yeah. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye